Good afternoon. We are now in the second part of this uh, three-part series called Unleash Your Faith. Unleash Your Faith. So often, so many of us have, over the course of time or over the course of the years, just had so many things in our lives or so much happening that a lot of time what begins to, to become a process within us is that we start holding back more and more. We become reticent, especially when it comes to the faith. And yet the beauty of Catholicism is such that when in the presence of such great beauty, it should motivate us and inspire us and allow us to burst forth. And yet still so often we as Catholics, we tend to be reticent, we hold back. And yet no, now that we've rooted our faith in the kingdom and we really truly believe in Jesus Christ, we have to rediscover Jesus again, rediscover our faith and unleash it on the world. I'm sure many of you do remember, it was many, many years ago now, there was a big project undertaken by the Vatican. They decided that it was time for the Sistine Chapel to get a good cleaning, basically. I mean, centuries worth of incense and wax and all sorts of stuff had really, when you looked up at the beautiful works of art, dulled them so much that you really couldn't see certain details anymore. The images themselves were just so like darkened and so overwhelmed by all the dust and the dirt that it was hard to really distinguish. And yet when the work first began and they first started to clean everything, even the workers themselves were shocked. They were surprised by the vibrancy of the colors. It had been so gradual, it had just taken so many years of the film and the dirt to build up that it actually dulled the images to the point where their vibrancy was lost. That project went ahead and they continued the whole thing. And I remember seeing it before the project began and after, and I have to admit, it was a huge difference. Walking in and you look up and now all of a sudden there are these bright, beautiful images above you. On the walls, you could see the bright, beautiful colors that had come out. That is a lot of like what I said last week. I tapped into what Bishop Barron talks about when he talks about beige Catholicism. I don't know if you've ever heard any of his podcasts or any of the things he does. He talks about the 1970s, especially where he was, when they would build new buildings, new church buildings, and they would do things. They use these beige bricks. And a lot of the buildings just became these nondescript, plain, boring buildings. And he referred to Catholicism becoming the same way. Catholicism in itself had started to become this just kind of beige, nondescript religion. And he says, to our detriment, we lost the appreciation of the beauty of Catholicism. And I think it's true for so many of us. I think so many of us today, because there was so many things going on, there were so many people that were just, like one of the things that I always say is a lot of what was happening in the 70s and the 80s was we started to talk very much about the horizontal within the church and completely forgot the vertical. And so what ended up happening was we started to see ourselves in charge of ourselves and not responsible to God. The second reading today, St. Paul is reminding us, no, we do it all for the praise and glory of God. We serve him first and foremost, and God is someone in our lives who really is a difference maker when you think about it. We really ought to be surrendering ourselves to him, and each and every day, more and more, surrendering ourselves to him. You know, I've met quite a few people, I don't know if you've ever talked to someone who's had cataract surgery, you know what I'm talking about then. Anybody who's had cataract surgery all says the same thing. When they were going in, they were so afraid, I might end up blind, I don't know what's going to happen, but I really can't see much anymore. And as one person came out from the surgery, and I saw her afterwards, I said, oh, how did it go? She goes, I see colors again. Everything is so, I, I can even read the newspaper without my glasses again. It's so wonderful. And that, I believe, too, we need to do for ourselves. I think we need to jettison a lot of the cataracts that have tainted our eyes from being able to see the beauty of Christ, of being able to see the beauty of who he is. We Catholics, we've gathered a lot of baggage, if you will. 
I mean, even not with things like the scandal or living through lockdowns or even any of those things, just the baggage we pick up in our own lives. We start to become a little jaded or tainted. We, we get in conversations with people and it just doesn't go well. And all of a sudden, we just start to think, you know what? It's just better to leave well enough alone. And so what do we do? We just take this baggage on ourselves. And the more we do that, the more difficult we find it to share the faith with others. I know so many Catholics today, when I, when I say, did you, know, did you have an opportunity this past week maybe to share your faith with someone who was struggling? Ah, no, you know, Father, I go into work. You don't talk about religion. You just don't do that. I said, why not? Oh, no, no, I'm just not, I'm not prepared for that. I'm not ready for that. And I smiled and I said, what then is the, what, what is it that would make you ready? And he didn't have an answer to the question. Today, Jesus is sending out his disciples. Now, if you remember the way we left it off last week, Jesus had just suffered, uh, just suffered an utter defeat in his hometown. He was trying to share the good news, and they threw him out. Who is this? Who is this guy? He, he, come on, he was our neighbor. He, he, he sounds good, he sounds convincing, but I can't accept it. And yet the disciples will still take Jesus' command to go out and, sh- and call people to repentance, to prepare the good news for them. And they went out in power. And boy, was it a difference maker. Now, any one of those disciples could have looked right back at Jesus and said, I'm not ready. You haven't really taught us very much yet. You haven't really said very much. I mean, what am I supposed to do when I go out there? How am I supposed to handle this? Jesus gives them the advice, I think, that's so perfect that I give to you. Don't take any baggage with you, and it'll all go fine. Don't take, don't take a bag. Don't take, don't take an extra tunic. Don't have all this stuff. Just go out and share the good news and watch the miracles happen. Go out and just take the beauty of Catholicism with you. And it doesn't have to be words of eloquence. You know, they say that a picture is worth a thousand words. I would say a picture could be worth a million words sometimes. Think of the beautiful art, like I said last week, how beautiful this church is, how often we walk in and we're not impressed by it anymore because, oh, I've looked at that window a thousand times. It's nice. There are times I come in here and I still glance up or I'm sitting in the chair and I see this beautiful image of Our Lady right there and I look up at it and sometimes I'm like, wow. It's unbelievably beautiful. And that is our faith. You don't have to go out with long sentences and treatises and be, you know, having a doctorate in theology and all the other stuff. Go out with the beauty first. Go out and share the good news. Jesus' disciples were not highly educated. In fact, they weren't educated at all for the most part. And yet they went out and they impressed people by just saying, repent and believe the good news. Come see this Jesus. Find out who he is. And the beauty that was within them shined forth. And so I'm asking you today to unleash your faith, yes, but do so as the disciples. Jesus has his disciples gathered around him. They sit at the feet of their master. And as they hear from their master, they pick up from him. Ask yourself this question this week. Who is your master? Who's your teacher? Where do you get most of your information from? Basically is what I'm saying. Is it from CNN or Fox News? Because for many of you, you spend all your time at the feet of those teachers. When was the last time maybe you turned on EWTN? Or maybe signed into Formed? and watch some of the great and wonderful things that they have there on the beauty of Catholicism. When was the last time maybe you picked up a spiritual book to read? I love The Imitation of Christ. I read Faustina's diary from time to time. Picking up, just reading little sections and being moved by the depth and the beauty and and the wonder of what it means to be called Christian. But if I sit all week long in front of the TV and I watch all of this mindless drivel going on all day, you know what my mind is going to be filled with at the end of the day? Drivel. 
But if I expose myself to the beauty, if I pick up the Bible, if I spend some time in prayer, if I meditate on the depth and the wonder of this Jesus Christ, I will start to change. And like those disciples, then I can be sent out into the world, not with long treatises, but with the beauty of what it means to be a Christian. And so I send you out, my dear brothers and sisters, as Jesus did today. I ask you, unleash your faith. You know it as well as I do. I mean, look around this world. Do they need Jesus Christ desperately out there? You bet they do. But how is he going to get out there if you don't bring him out? So unleash the faith that you have, this faith in Jesus Christ, this belief that you have. Don't be reticent any longer. Don't let the stuff of your life collapse in. Don't let the baggage that you've been collecting over the years with regard to the faith stop you from being that truth, that that beauty and truth to others. Go forth in power. And I guarantee if you truly believe in Jesus Christ and lay your life at his feet and listen to him day after day, the miracles will happen. They're not profound things, but they will happen. You will see other people's lives start to change as your life starts to change. You will see other people's lives start to come to Christ because you brought him there and they saw the beauty in you. Anytime I've been exposed to a holy person, anytime I've actually talked to someone who's really truly a believer, there's something within me that's disarmed and just says, wow, that was a magnificent experience. They didn't say much, but I really truly want to know more about this person. I want to know what it is that makes them tick. And when I find out it's Jesus, then I'm like, that's why. So allow others to experience the beauty of Christ in you. We're going to wrap it up next week when the disciples return and recount how many beautiful and wonderful things. But all we need to do as Christians ourselves is to tap into the beauty of Catholicism and allow that beauty to unleash us to bring Christ to this fallen world. God bless you.